All right, so we've had the Webasto Thermotop here at the house for at least a month and a half, maybe two months. I just wanted to make sure that I had a really good plan together before I started doing that. So now the time has come and we need to, well, we need to figure it out. So I'm gonna pop the hood on this Ford Transit 350 and see what we're working with as far as space. From there. All right, so we're going to use this Webasto Thermotop water heater to do three main things in the build. Um, number one, we're going to heat the air with it. Uh, it's not as simple as it sounds. Number two, we're going to heat water with it. And then number three, we're gonna use it for a recirculating shower. So, under this passenger seat, they already have a heater. And the existing floor that we took out had runs for the heater, um, essentially that came through here. It uses the coolant from the radiator in order to heat a coil that then is blown underneath here which I'll link up there or a past video. And now we have it coming out of this duct here, which will be in a toe kick and a cabinet that is there. First and foremost is I gotta make sure that I don't mess up any of the equipment on the vehicle itself. Um, that's primary. Webasto recommends that you put the unit inside of the engine compartment and bolt it to the frame directly. I don't see anywhere to do that. So we decided to go in another location and I'm hoping that we don't live to regret it. Alright guys, we are about to drop the tank, install this uh, secondary fuel line. So I gotta hit all these bolts, there's six in total. We'll drop that tank down. I left the two front bolts in and loose, so that way the whole tank can pivot backwards, giving me enough space to reach in and do what I need to do. Okay. So as you can see, there's the top of the fuel tank. And it seems, I can get in here without messing up the shot. This is the guy that we want. I'm gonna give you guys a little idea of what exactly I was going through over here. Sorry for the double chin. This is, wrist is killing me. But here's what we had. Our infinite loop. Wow, 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 wow. And we went up to, you can see where the line's going right now. I'm gonna have to squeeze my hand in there. Amount of that, why it took so long, is I was trying to reach 
in and underneath like this in order to pinch that clip. So I devised a tool to make that happen. So this part of the project took about two hours and uh, most of the time was spent in this little bitty space fiddling around with that auxiliary port. Um, in hindsight, pulling the tank all the way down, dealing with the unknowns of the wires and the hoses that go to the front of the tank, uh, it would have been a whole lot more efficient. But now you guys know, and you can make your own decision. But mine's already done. So let us know in the description how you did yours or how you plan on doing yours. On the 2019, this is the auxiliary port cover. And essentially it works. You pull this yellow part out like that. And then you pinch in on both of these sides here and there. And what it's supposed to do is release and I seriously doubt you can see in there. It's supposed to release two prongs on both sides. But my fingers, as you can kind of see, my fingers are too fat to really get in there. So as much as I really wanted to do anything, it wasn't releasing. So I took a pair of pliers. Then I was able to pinch those two, creating enough to be able to pull it out. So you can see our fuel pump here, where we placed it. Uh, they provide a little rubber clamp for it to fit into. And essentially it just holds it there. Um, the most important thing about this one is you wanna make sure that it's not gonna hit, it's free to wiggle free of anything um, side to side here. But also you wanna make sure that this is on, a, on an angle. So if this is flat, you want it to be tilted in the direction of flow. Just that way, nothing, no sediment or anything has the ability to get stuck in that pump. So that was not real difficult. They recommend that you fasten this thing to the actual frame itself. But for the life of me, I couldn't figure that one out. So, went to one of the hardware stores Got a quarter inch thick plate of steel. Used an industrial glue and screwed it to the side using the strong points they build for you. So today we're ready to fit it on there and get everything plumbed. If you guys are gonna spend any kind of time under your van, on the ground, plumbing, doing anything, highly recommend a creeper. So I plan on getting this whole thing plumbed up and then I'll have to go back and actually lock tight these things in so no bolts come loose. But as of the moment, I like what I see. So I wanted to take a little bit of time and show you guys this Webasto in full detail. But I wanted to say before I did that, I'm not a mechanic, I'm not a professional. I'm not certified by Webasto to install these things. Um, me trying to install it, I believe, pretty much voids any warranty of it. So in saying that, um, if you're not mechanically inclined or you know you don't do this sort of thing often, or if you're just worried about the money, maybe have somebody professionally do this for you. Not only that, but 
you're dealing with combustibles, you're dealing with your van. Um, I'm sure in some way the van's warranty itself, you know, because I dropped the tank myself. I'm sure I avoided some kind of warranty there too. Um, weigh your own risk. Figure out if this is something that you really want to do or not. I'm gonna have a go at it, see what happens. So when you pull this thing out of the box, it does pretty much look like this. There's several different packets looking like this. Um, no instructions whatsoever um, because they want you to have someone install it. So there is a lot of figuring out if you look at this harness is there's nothing labeled on the harness. None of these, where you do see a label, it's actually just a part number. It's not actually, you know, directions or telling you what the, it goes to. Luckily, there is some labeling. Exhaust, fuel, air, pretty much all of the things that were obvious. But um, the good news is all of your clips will only fit. There's only a clip for a certain thing. So you don't have to worry about plugging the wrong thing in somewhere. So the two things I don't have here in front of me right now are my fuel pump and my water pump. Both of those are still inside. I didn't want to mess with that right now. What I'm worried about is getting this installed. I installed that plate yesterday. Um, it's had time to cure and glue and the, everything to be set up. So I installed that yesterday. So now I want to see how everything fits together on this. And then we can move towards putting it in place, running my lines, and getting everything kind of set up. So as I said, everything kind of fits pretty easily. There you go. Um, surprisingly, I was complaining because there wasn't a fastener to keep your exhaust, um, rather your intake for your air on there. But it seems like it just screws on because that sucker ain't going nowhere. This piece that's missing here is for your pump, which um, your pump can only be like a foot away. And once we get everything installed, I'll kind of show you what I mean by that. But um, I think I'm ready to take it underneath. So, we'll see you down there. I have thread lock on. since he's down forever. I'd hate to lose this running down the road. Every, so just about a video I do, almost every, I always feature a tool, something that you need. And man, I didn't know I needed it, but this thing has been invaluable. Essentially, it's just a 90 degree attachment for your drill by Dewalt. But holy shit, it's, um, you know, nice and sturdy. I had one before that was pretty crappy. I kind of threw it away, but this one. Definitely recommend this guy. So if you're in the market, I'll link it below. So we've got our water pump here. It also came with a rubber bracket to be mounted with. So the important thing here is, remember, I, as I said before, it, it has to be within a, about a foot of wherever your pump is. That's all the, the cord they give you. Um, but if there's any air in your lines for your coolant, it has to be able to escape this pump. So what they recommend is, the exit port you just have to have an angle on it so that way as you collect air it needs to be able to get out and go back into your lines we're gonna call this part of the webasto install complete we still need to wire it up we still need to test it but that my friends is for another day if you guys got anything out of this video please give us a thumbs up Make sure you subscribe, make sure you hit that notification bell if you want to know what happens next. 
If you like this video, maybe check out one of these other ones. We appreciate it. And we'll see you guys on the next one.